This is the story of my family. We're the Duggars. For years, the Duggar family has been portrayed on their TLC show, 19 Kids and Counting, as a wholesome yeah, let, Christian family with old-fashioned okay. values. All right, let's all hold hands here, okay? No TV, modest dress. This one for the this double date. No cursing. And above all, no premarital sex. We decided that there was going to be no kissing before marriage. But now they are a family under fire. After allegations surfaced, their oldest child, Josh Duggar, had inappropriate contact with several underage girls beginning when he was 14 years old. The family presented itself as the perfect all-American Christian family. And all of a sudden, one of the most salacious things you could imagine, which is child molestation, goes in and people can't help but look. It's like watching a train wreck. The issue here is that this train wreck has been broadcast across television screens in America for several seasons. And in spite of controversial comments, such as daughter Jessa comparing abortion to the Holocaust, the Duggars still managed to stay on television thanks to their cable home not wanting to make any greater waves or interfere with another cash cow aimed at entertaining the intelligence damaged who live vicariously through such extremists. Until now, of course, when Josh Duggar couldn't excuse, wrangle, talk his way out of, or in any other fashion, back away from the fact that he was named in a 2005 sexual abuse case and was turned in by his father. Duggar has also resigned from his position as executive director of the politically powerful Christian Family Research Council. We have to stand up for what is right. TLC, the cable channel that airs 19 Kids and Counting, now in its 10th season, declined comment. The Duggars have been outspoken proponents of sexual chastity. Well, you guys can't kiss yet. Which Josh Duggar, whose wedding was featured on the show in 2008, talked about earlier this season. During our courtship, so we decided that there was going to be no kissing and obviously no sex before marriage. As with any reality show currently on TV, there is about as much real reality here as there is truth and hardcore fact to anything with bridesmaids or real housewives in the title. Sex lies and videotape never hit home closer than what a good portion of America gobbles up as fact. But the only fact one can take from any of these shows is that certain mothers of certain young girls should be brought up on child endangerment charges and have said kids removed from their custody faster than they can gobble up free banana splits at the production lunch truck. Oh, but I digress on that one. Normally, being associated with an admitted teen sex offender would not be considered the smartest thing for anybody to do, much less someone who seeks to become president of the United States. You have Mike Huckabee. GOP candidate for president coming out with a long statement today on Facebook. Let me read you part of it saying good people make mistakes and do regrettable, even disgusting things. The reason that the law protects disclosure of many actions on the part of a minor is that society has traditionally understood something that today's bloodthirsty media does not understand. All right, Governor Huckabee is entitled to his opinion. There are plenty of people who agree with him. No matter the sin, Josh Duggar deserves forgiveness. But this brings us to the governor's Facebook page, where he posted his defense of Duggar and a small taste of what the responses have been. Phil B., for instance, you have my vote for best career suicide. You're despicable. Ariel Lane F., let's face the facts, guys. Uh, Jim, both, and Michelle Duggar knowingly covered up the molestation of their own daughters, did not seek actual therapy for anybody involved from a professional, and allowed the molester to remain in the home in contact with the very children he molested. Uh, Tony D., how dare you publicly accuse the homosexual community as being sexually immoral, yet you remain supportive of this child molester and his father, who kept this quiet after knowing for over a year. And for Bill B., well, enjoy not being president. Now, I pride myself on being down the middle in commentaries, but it's nearly impossible to find a handful of comments supporting Huckabee on this one. Here's about the only one I could find. From Joy G.A., if a person repents, truly repents, he can and will be forgiven. All right, look, I've interviewed Governor Huckabee, found him always to be gracious, forthright, honestly believing in his stand on issues and certainly in his faith. A laudable characteristics anybody should be proud of and what we should look for in a president, usually. Because I'm sorry, Governor, you crossed a line here that very well may prove to be your POTUS undoing. The Duggars are done, and there are plenty of people out here who hoped you would be a lot smarter than to allow yourself to wallow in the same mud pit as these people. Hey, look, let's be honest. Forgiveness is a wonderful thing, and it is a real virtue. But in the case of an admitted child molester, for that there is no forgiveness ever. And Governor Huckabee, you need to understand that, because if you don't, then maybe you don't deserve to be president of these United States. That's my opinion, telling it like it is. Rock on, true believers. See you next time, right back here on The Hard Line.